What's up? Welcome to Forte Catholic Radio. This is your host, Taylor Schroll. We have got a fantastic show lined up for you today. We are going to have so much fun um, talking about probably one of the best ideas I've had in a very long time. I had some help with a, with a game that we just put out online called Ministry Madness that we're going to be talking about today. We'll introduce that here in a second. In the second segment, we're going to be joined by Mr. Chris Bartlett, who's the founder of Next Level Ministries and also a, one of the contestants in our games. And in the final segment, we're going to be joined by Mr. Tony Vicinda of Project YM and maybe a special guest host at the end. The special guest host is at a children's birthday party and it gets out at eight. So he's going to try to sneak out. But uh, we have a fantastic show today. Um, We are live on the air at Red Sea Radio in College Station, Texas. If you're listening on the podcast, we do this show live every Tuesday night from seven to eight. If you're listening live, you ever miss a show? We got a podcast online as well. So here's the game that just came out. Brackets just ended, right? March Madness just ended. The um, the Tar Heels just won the whole thing, right? Nobody cares about the women's bracket. I don't know who won. I know the UConn's women's team that hadn't lost a game in like six years lost. So they didn't win. I think that was the main story. But the the brackets are all over, right? People love brackets. It's like it's the it's the it was the craze during March, and there just seems to kind of be a lull in April. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna create a bracket. And what this, ma- this bracket is called is Ministry Madness 2017. What this bracket is, is we decided a group of 64 Catholic U.S. ministry leaders from all across the nation. There's youth ministers, there's musicians, there's apologists, there's clergy, and there's the women's bracket. So it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. This came out of a conversation between me and Mr. Brian Lennox. He's been on the show before. Um... And Brian, whenever he was on the air with us, we had some technical difficulties. And instead of uh, at, at the end of the show at eight o'clock, we were supposed to get like it kicks us off the air, right? It kicks us off alive and goes back to the uh, recorded uh, programming. But uh, it didn't work that way. There was some not my fault. <laughs> Jake, Jake, our producer here, continues to say that it's some kind of glitch. Um, I don't know if it was user error or uh, technology error, but not my fault. it actually kept us on the air for like five, six, seven minutes after the show was over. And Brian and I didn't know. So we're friends and we're just sitting there talking about like Star Wars and Carrie Fisher dying. It's like womp womp. And it's like <laughs> live on the air instead of the Catholic news that people are supposed to be hearing. Right. <laughs> so um, Brian and I were texting back and forth on Saturday. I was in the middle of a retreat and me and Brian were texting back and forth. Um, because uh, I saw that Brian was on Kyle Hyman's show, who's uh, also a friend of the show. Kyle's been on my show. I've been on his show. So we were, we were, Brian and I were talking about being on Kyle's show. And, uh, I asked him if, uh, if, if whenever he was on Kyle's show, if he was, you know, had some technical difficulties, he says, no, the show was very professional when I was on Kyle's show. And I said, well, that professional sounds a lot less fun. We definitely had more fun over here on our show. Sorry, Kyle. Um, <clears throat> so we were talking about how much we like Kyle. Kyle's a great dude. Been doing ministry with Popple for years. He's a speaker, uh, works with Spork now, and then he has a, a radio show on Redeemer Radio over in the north. You know, anywhere above Texas is north, right? So I, uh, we were talking about how much we love Kyle. I was like, Kyle's great. And then Br- uh, Brian was like, yeah, he's awesome. He wouldn't win in a fight, though. I was like, you know what we should do? We should get ministry leaders from across the nation in a, in a boxing fight, right? And, and, and see who would win of all these ministry leaders. Uh, because, like, youth ministry actually started as, like, priests getting young, young men together to go in boxing rings just to kind of be uh, physically active and to, to be around the church, right? So, like, let's go back to that. And so it was just kind of a joke. And then a few minutes later, I was like, oh, I'm going to make this bracket. <laughs> and then we did. So the laugh you're hearing, that is not Jake with a girly laugh. That is Miss Becca Landry, and she was actually there on Saturday with me. And when I told her this uh, idea, she got real excited, and we we started going through the list together, uh, deciding who was going to be in this bracket. So, Becca, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to our friends over here? All right. Um, I am Becca Landry. I'm a youth minister with Ablaze Ministries here in College Station, Bryan. And so I'm actually a middle school youth minister out in Brenham, Texas. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, absolutely love it. And uh, that's pretty much what I do. I'm a musician, and now I'm on live radio. So yeah, this is her dream come true. I I <laughs> I, I make people's dreams come true. Um, so 
what we're actually going to do is we're going to walk through this bracket. You can find it at ForteCatholic.com. It's on the homepage. It's on the blog, uh, ForteCatholic.com slash blog slash Ministry Madness 2017. But it, it is there on the front page. It's also on my Facebook and my Twitter at Taylor Schroll. You can find it there. So we're going to walk through this bracket with, with – um, Becca and Jake. And what I want to want to do is like introduce our contestants, the people who are going to be um, fighting in this imaginary boxing competition. Right. So like we couldn't get everybody together, but I think some of us actually kind of are pretty excited about the, the idea of fighting each other. So you never know. We might get somebody to actually get in a boxing ring. But what this is, is I want you to go online and Vote on who you think would win. And, and it's just like a bracket, like a like an NCAA basketball bracket. You vote on who goes on who goes to the next round, but you are actually deciding the winner. You, the voters, you, the users, you, the listeners of this podcast, you, the listeners on a Red Sea Catholic Radio, you are deciding who is going to win. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to introduce all of our contestants, and then Jake and Becca are going to, just, are going to say who they think will win. So first... In the youth minister's bracket, all these next 16 people are youth ministers. Um, Alex Gote is the first one. He is the number one seed in the entire tournament. He is an ex-Marine. He's a current MMA stud. He's always like working out and crazy kind of stuff. And then uh, Mr. Michael Marson from Project YM, uh, he, he uh, sent me a message earlier that he was really mad that I put him up against Alex. So, uh, Becca and Jake, who do you vote for in this round? Alex. Uh, same. Okay. All right. So, Alex moves on. We voted for him. The next one is Mark Hart who is the uh, vice president of Life Teen. He's uh, one of the best speakers in the nation. Uh, and then Mr. Matt Rice, who uh, the three of us know very well. He is the founder and president of Ablaze Ministries. Um, so be careful, Becca, because this is your boss. Uh, who do you think will win? Um, exactly for that reason. I am, I am voting for Matt. <laughs> yes. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, Matt. Okay. Yep. I, I chose Mark initially because he's more popular, but then you, you reinstated that it's not a popularity contest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If this was a popularity contest, the people with like 78,000 followers on Twitter would win, right? Still Mark. Still Mark. <laughs> okay. Um, I, think, <laughs> I think I voted for Matt, so I'm going to be the tiebreaker whenever you guys disagree. All right. The next one's Paul George. He's a fantastic speaker out of, out of Louisiana. Um, he's a campus minister uh, at one of the universities over there. He's, he's actually had a huge impact on my life. He spoke at a lot of the conferences wherever... Um, where I had my conversion. And then Chris Bartlett, who's actually going to be on the show later today. He started Next Level Ministries to help train youth ministers. Uh, who'd you guys vote for in this one? Um, well, I really love Chris Bartlett, but the jaw on Paul George is really what is really what got me. You know, you can just tell he, he works out. That was my choice. <laughs> By his jaw? By his jaw, I, yes. li I lifted eight, eight <laughs> every day for eight hours, and now my jaw looks like this. <laughs> All right, Jake, who do you pick? I, I chose Chris because I think he's kind of crazy because, I don't know, have you ever met Chris? And that is true. So Paul would just get intimidated and scared and probably run away. So I, uh, Chris is going to be on the show, so this is like really bad for me to do, but I totally picked Paul in this one, <laughs> yeah. and Chris is going to be really mad. I'll let him defend himself in the second segment. Uh, the next one's Christophonic or Jim Beckman. Now, there's a little age discrepancy in this one, right? Um, so uh, Christophonic uh, is the... Uh, started real life Catholic. He's like a great guy, does a lot of media stuff. Jim Beckman has been one of the youth ministry leaders in this nation for many, many years. He's trained some of the best youth ministers in the nation at like all the youth ministry conferences he is there. I'm sharing with people. So uh, who'd you guys vote for in this one? This is a hard one because I actually don't think that they would end up fighting. Um, but I picked Chris. I have to agree. Have you ever seen that man? His biceps scare me. Yeah, that's for sure. Yes. Um, he's one of the only people that actually scare me personally in, in, have, in this thing. Have you met? Have you heard Justin's story about meeting him? I have not. And no one knows who Justin is. Another guy that works at a place. But anyway, <laughs> um, he went up to him and said, you know, you're a lot more buff in person than you are on the Chosen videos. And, <laughs> and for that reason, I have to pick Chris. All right. So we went with Chris. Uh, go check out his stuff on 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 shows and all those great things. RealLifeCatholic.com. The next one is Tony Vicenda, who is actually going to be on the show later today. Uh, he actually wasn't scheduled to be on the show. I put this out on the on the um, interwebs about an hour before the show started, and he was like, "Hey, if you need anything for the air, um, we're I'm totally available." So I was like, "Yeah, let's do it tonight." He's like, "Okay," so he's going to come on. Um, so Tony, he sent me an updated bio 
And in it, he says, Tony also has six years of wrestling experience and five years of mixed martial arts, dot, 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 a decade and four kids ago. And I, I, I totally can relate with this guy because, like, I was, a, I was a college athlete. I used to be, you know, like this manly man and I, I could do everything. And then I got fat. So <laughs> I, had, I got married, had kids. So um, uh, Tony is from Project YM. Uh, go check them out online. And he is going up against Annie Hickman, the founder of Adore Ministries. Um, who'd, you, who'd you guys pick in this one? I picked Tony. I have to agree. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, and he's a great guy. Very small man. Mm-hmm. Um, he actually. The he, updated bio had, did it for me. The updated bio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a beard. All right. Um, the next one is actually a guy that uh, I'm very familiar with. We, him and I go way back. It, it's, it's, <laughs> it's me. So um, I, I am going up against a, a, a guy who was also on the show. And I have to say, I did do most of the um, like seating of all of this. And so I don't want to be said, made out to be a bully, but I'm totally going to go up against a dude like literally half my size. So Mr. Matt Reggett's, um, who'd you guys pick in this one? And I will mute you if you say Matt. I picked you because I've experienced your boxing skills firsthand with myself. Yeah, so. I, I accidentally hurt Becca earlier. We'll <laughs> talk about that later. <laughs> and by that, I mean never on the air. <laughs> Jake, who'd you pick? Stop muting me, Taylor. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, I actually, I'm going to pick Taylor as well. All right. You're very good at following directions. Thank All you. right. The next one's a great one because Brian Lennox is one of the guys that helped me create this. And he is very good friends with the guy that uh, I put him up against. It's Mr. Michael Gormley, also known as Gomer from the Catching Foxes podcast. Brian is a um, youth minister, our director of evangelization over at St. Faustina Church um, in the Houston area. So who'd you guys pick in this one? They, they look like exactly the same. I mean, I don't know if I would say they look exactly the same, but Brian has that kind of crazed look in his eye. Just that. So that's who I picked. It's yeah, he's he's a he's a crazy dude, that's for sure. Um yeah. I agree. Brian wins. Brian? All right, sorry Gomer. Um all right, here we go. Justin Fatika, like l- the biggest pers- like the biggest muscles in this entire bracket, right? Um Justin Fatika is from Hard as Nails. Uh, highly sought after speaker. And then Joel Stefanik, who I actually m- met in person a couple of weeks ago. Um, he's He works with Life Teen, does a lot of speaking as well. Um, I, I th- who do y'all pick for this one? I think I know the answer. Justin, I mean, he even has the shirt. Look yes. at how tight it is. Yeah, so, it's perfect. so for those of you who are listening to this and haven't done the bracket yet, like it's online and there's pictures and bios going on with this thing, right? Like Justin looks like he's just staring Joel down, like he's going to beat him up. So, uh, yeah, I think Justin wins this one. So um, in the next section of the bracket, I think we're only going to get through half of this in this first segment. Um, we'll do the we'll do the second half in the in the final segment. But uh, uh, we've, the next bracket's like clergy and media people. This is kind of the catch all uh, apologists and that sort of thing. Right. So Father Leo Padalinghug, he's like grace before meals. He's a he's a chef. He's a ninja. He's a speaker. He's a musician. Like the dude's literally good at everything. Right. Uh, like he did like this ninja routine at a student vote conference one year that I was at. And I was like scared of him. And he's a very small man, but I was still scared of him. Um, he's going up against his good friend, Mr. Tom Leopold, who I think is like 70 plus years old right he's a comedian he wrote for cheers and Re- will and grace just a super funny guy so who'd y'all pick to win in this one father leo father leo yeah absolutely oh, yeah is he a black belt I, poor yeah he's he's a black belt white color small uh, man <laughs> small man fierce man small man fierce man that should be his tagline on his website. A t-shirt um so Tim Staples, who's also been on the show, I actually didn't know until I made this bracket that he's also an ex-Marine. Um, so he's a he's 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 uh, getting a little up there in age now. So uh, it's been a few years since his Marine years, but he's uh, he's still a, he's still a good stocky guy, right? Going up against Jason Everett, who is uh, a, a chastity speaker for the Chastity Project. Uh, who'd you guys pick in this one? Tim, he's huge. He looks so tall. He is very tall. I think Jason's got it because of he's younger. He's younger. Mm. This is this is a good matchup. Yeah, it is. Like, uh, I I picked Tim. I picked Tim just because of the ex-military thing, and I I uh, I've seen him in person. He's a big dude. All right, the next one is Matt Frad, who is a um a, a speaker as well. Uh, does a lot of a lot of work with purity and those types of things. And then my favorite Catholic radio show host, Mr. Lena Rule, other than myself, of course. But um, <laughs> Lena Lena Rule, no, he really is. Lena really, I um actually 
one of the biggest reasons I wanted to get a show is because of Lino. So um, I love him to death, but he's also he, like on his show. He's also always self-deprecating that he can't do a push-up. So I definitely picked Matt Fred this one. What do you like, I, you guys? Yeah, I picked Matt he's from Australia. I concur. Him. All yeah. Australians, any Australian in this would win. Basically, yeah. I mean, uh, he probably he probably <laughs> wrestles kangaroos in his pastime. You know, <laughs> pastime. What a weird word. Um, I didn't know what the, else. <laughs> <laughs> the next, this is uh, Becca's debut, and she's using words Free like time. pastime. <laughs> uh, the next one I think is one of my other favorite uh, matchups here. It's Bishop Robert Barron, everybody's favorite bishop named Barron, and uh, who's you know word on fire. He's he's was famous even before he became a bishop, right? Um, and then Jimmy Aiken, who's also been on the show. Now, now here's the deal. I think a few months ago, Bishop Robert Barron would have won this hands down. But Jimmy Aiken has been like showing that he's been losing a ton of weight, and he's lost like I think seventy or eighty pounds in the last like year or something. So he's getting down to a fighting weight. But uh, who do you guys think would win? Originally, I had Bishop, but I think you sold me with the with the losing weight. I mean, if he's working out, you know. Yeah, I was always on Jimmy. Did you see that beard? You were always on Jimmy? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm outvoted. I picked Bishop Robert Barron, but boy, Jimmy. He was on uh, podcast episode 10. Go check it out uh, online, fortecatholic.com slash radio. Um, you can also vote on the next one. This next one is Mr. Matthew Kelly, who apparently is also from Australia. It's also a pretty scary man. Um, he's founder of Dynamic Catholic. You've probably gotten a free book from your parish from Dynamic Catholic at some point in the past couple of years. Um, and then also Marcel Lejeune, who actually used to work in this building, and uh, he, I think he does like marathons or something. He's a great speaker at uh, CatholicEvangelist.com. Who'd you guys pick in this one? I picked Marcel because if you pass by him, sometimes he's really scary, and I just think that he would dominate anything like that. I think he would, too. I also picked Marcel, but for a different reason. I think, um, yes, Matthew Kelly is, what did you say, Australian? Australian, yes. Um, but... Uh, Marcel is Cajun, so there you go. All right, we got a couple more in in this in this second bracket. Uh, fa- we're gonna go through this quickly. Father Mike Schmitz or David Calavita. Father Mike, everybody knows him from his podcast and stuff. Great speaker. David Calavita works with Life Teen. Who'd you guys pick in this one? I picked Father Mike Schmitz. Same. Yeah, that dude. I mean, he works for a thing called Bulldog Catholic. That's that's scary. And then uh, I think the final one on or second final one, Curtis Martin or Christopher West. Curtis Martin, founder of Focus. Christopher West uh, does a lot of work with uh, Theology of the Body. I picked Curtis, but I don't know why. This is a pretty even one. Chris. Christopher West. Chris. All right. Well, guys, I'll let you decide. This is all about you, the voters. So uh, thank you, Becca and Jake, for uh, participating in this. We will go through the second half of the bracket in the third segment with Tony Vicinda. All right. We will be right back with Mr. Chris Bartlett about Next Level Ministries. Stay tuned. All right, we are back with our second segment of the evening. As promised, we are joined with Mr. Chris Bartlett. Uh, Chris, how you doing tonight, brother? I'm fabulous. Taylor, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, we were just actually talking. You actually know what's going on. We were just talking about this Ministry Madness bracket uh, in the first segment. We're going to keep talking about it throughout the show in the third segment. Um, so uh, you and I are going to talk about your ministry and Holy Week. But before we get into those important things, I want you to give the good people an introduction to yourself, first of all, and then why you should win this bracket. All right, great. So uh, my name is Chris Bartlett. I am uh, the Director of Youth Ministry at St. William Catholic Church in Round Rock, Texas. I uh, am also a founder and uh, the Vice President of Next Level Ministry. Um, and why I should win the bracket, I'm six foot three. I've got a good long reach. I, uh, I'm a scrappy fighter um, and uh, I'm a runner. So I guess I, I try and stay in decent shape that way. Uh, it would definitely be round three or four before I knocked anyone down just because I don't have the upper body strength. But I am a person perseverant little dude as i've been in ministry for over 15 years now so that's that's a very well-rounded argument you've thought about this over the last few hours uh, <laughs> I, i've I, been th- dreaming i've been eating <laughs> differently yeah, i'm getting ready man. i'm getting ready you do realize none of us are actually going to fight right oh i wouldn't hold my breath on that if you and i face off my friend yeah dude 
I, I think some of us might actually get together. There's some people in this bracket that are like, we're totally doing this. So we're, we might we're have just a... not allowed to talk about it. The first two rules, we can't talk about it. <laughs> All right, we'll edit that part out. Um, yep. So the, my favorite part about why you, sh- why you said you should win is the, is the running aspect. With a lot of these people in this bracket, I think the running away is actually going to be very helpful for you. So I'll, I'll wear them out. They'll eventually fall over from exhaustion and it'll work out just fine. <laughs> you, just, you walk up to them on the other ground, just like tap them in the face, and then they're done. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, you, you were talking about next level ministry. So, why don't you explain to the good, the, the good folks of the Bryan College Station in Waco area listening live on Red Sea Radio and to the listeners on the podcast, what the heck is Next Level Ministry? Why did you guys start it? What do y'all do? Great. So, Next Level Ministry is a ministry that seeks to minister to those that minister to others. I know, it sounded like inception there, but essentially we seek to build or form, foster uh, excellence in ministry leadership. So this is for uh, youth ministers out there. This is for priests out there. This is for ministry leaders um, who sometimes uh, are, you know, uh, ministering on empty. And that's, uh, that's a real difficult place to be. And so we seek to equip, empower, inspire um, in a way that uh, a lot of other places aren't. You can get you can get curriculums. You can get ideas for icebreakers, games. You can get those type of things. But getting poured into is sometimes a once a year type of thing at a conference or a personal retreat. Next Level Ministry seeks to change that through ongoing engagement with our website, with uh, blogs, speaking uh, trainings, different things like that, where we uh, coach and consult um, to help people journey through um, really one of the hardest jobs in the world, but also one of the most fulfilling, and that's ministering, bringing others to Christ. Yeah, that's great. Like amongst ministry leaders, every time we all get together, we're always talking about, oh, you know, it's, <laughs> this part of the job is hard and it's great to like be in community and to help each other out. But a lot of people outside of the ministry world um, sometimes look at us as like, oh, that's the person that works for the church. They're super holy. They have it all together. And so many people in ministry are just struggling or falling apart or getting stressed out or getting burnt out or all these things. So uh, I love what you guys are doing uh, with next level. It's been, a, I've gotten to hang out with you guys quite a few times. It's been uh, yep. a, a privilege just uh, a, a privilege seriously. And then just way too much fun because you guys are absolutely ridiculous and we have way too much fun together. So um, you mentioned the blogs and, and um, your online presence and those kind of things. Um, and you also mentioned the coaching there at the end. So, if you were going to coach somebody, what all is entailed in that? How do you how do you guys go about that? Uh, we would seek to uh, kind of establish some uh, a baseline of kind of what is your goals, what's your hopes. You know, sometimes pastors bring us in to coach their youth ministers or one of their staff members. Um, sometimes uh, a youth minister themselves says, "I need poured into, I need training in this area." But really, we have kind of a base of, uh, of the first six sessions, kind of create a baseline of um, a vision of ministry. Uh, how to recruit, retain volunteers, how to share the vision, uh, what's the difference between setting a goal and having a mission statement, those type of things that uh, really create the platform for successful ministry. And then uh, to each coaching session that we do, uh, we we listen uh, more than we actually speak. And so the first 30 minutes is dedicated to us being a soundboard um, for what's going on in the life of the minister and the parish that they're ministering in. Um, you know, vulnerability is something that is rare in in ministers uh, among people that they, you know, work with and things like that. It's hard for a ministry leader to go ahead and say, hey, guys, I'm really feeling distant from Christ right now, because their job is to bring people to that same Jesus right. that they feel distant from. And so having someone that, that is outside the parish that you can go ahead and talk to and say, how do you pray when, when you feel like you're empty? How do you go ahead and lead, tell people about Jesus? when you know that the only thing you need right now is confession, you know, and, and things like that. So um, we, we help with that and we're just a safe, uh, we give a space and a place for ministers to, uh, to grow. That's fantastic. Cause I think we've mentioned on the show before, because, you know, I've worked in youth ministry for a while. A lot of people that come on the show have worked in youth ministry and like the average youth minister lasts 18 to 24 months, you know, and a lot of times cause they're by themselves, they don't have support. They don't feel trained. So they just up and leave, right? And I, I think the model that you guys are doing, helping out people who are who are in situations like that, is just tremendous. Not only for for the church and for the youth, but also for that youth minister as a person. So, um, I know you guys have a presence online, and y'all are y'all are on Twitter and and Facebook, and then you guys do videos. Why don't you explain like what's the what do y'all talk about? What's the general um, goal of the videos that you guys share on YouTube and Facebook and that sort of thing? So uh, first, we talk about 
three minutes or less. That way people actually view the videos, right? And so that's important on social media to be uh, short, concise. Um, but, but a lot of it is just inspiring people to, uh, to take that next step, whether it's overcoming a challenge or engaging, engaging a room full of middle schoolers um, or just putting yourself in a place of prayer. And so they're all pretty diverse in regards to topics online, um, the, the videos, the blogs. Um, and and the, the blogs themselves, we actually have a number of written blog posts that, that get a little bit more into here are some very specific actionable items, five steps to uh, transform this aspect or to do this, um, you know, four secret hacks for engaging uh, an audience's attention. Um, but but the, the, the videos, they, uh, they tend to just kind of have one takeaway that we really dial in on. And our goal is to inspire and uh, and also make people smile. It's a it's a lot of fun getting some feedback uh, when it, it, it was received on some of the videos. It's a lot of fun, dude. They, they're great. They really are. I, I follow I follow them on I use I use Feedly on my uh, on my iPad to like follow a bunch of people's blogs and videos and all kinds of stuff. I've pretty much watched every single one, and they've been helpful for me. Even though I've been in ministry for almost ten years now, I'm like, oh that's new or wow, I haven't done that in a while. So I find it very helpful. So especially, especially if you're in youth ministry or if you are a, um, like a a core team leader, or if you work in the parish, go check them out. What's y'all's website? Nextlevelministry.org. Nice. So I, I I can never remember if it's .org or .com, right? So go to the .org one. Otherwise you'll uh, land in the same place that I did. So, um, today we've been talking about like pretty much this whole show, you are bookended by just us going through this ministry madness and just having some fun, right? But it is it sure. is it is Holy Week. So for the next like f- five to ten minutes, I want you like you have the great burden on your shoulders to make this show holy for about a little less than ten minutes, right? So we're talking about Holy Week. How would you uh, guide us in having a next level Holy Week? How can we have the best Holy Week that we possibly can? Great. Well, first, I would say um, lead with your strengths. And so if you already know that you, uh, you love the adoration or that, that you, uh, you really enjoy, um, you know, meditation or uh, the rosary, go ahead and dive in uh, to Holy Week through that as a vessel. Let, let you get kind of warmed up in prayer by doing that. Of course, once we enter the Triduum, I think there's some liturgies and things like that that we should groove into but i mean it's it's tuesday of holy week right now so we've got a couple more days before we dive into those very sacred liturgies so pray with your prayer style you know uh, uh, there's that book the five love languages i think that there's a number of different prayer languages that people have and so go ahead and lead yourself into it with a prayer style that you're comfortable with the next thing is just to keep in mind um what is at stake and so if you go ahead and uh kind of lectio divina and put yourself back in that situation. So often we find ourselves in, in the shoes of, uh, of other characters in those stories. When we imagine, we never put ourselves in the, in the place of Jesus himself. But if you knew that you were going to die three days from now, if you knew that, or if you, that you were going to die tomorrow, everything you say, every word that you say would have a deeper and, 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 and profound meaning compared to, say, just talking about a, uh, a bracket of a bunch of people mock fighting each other. Yeah, I would example. totally end the bracket in two days and not t- 14. That would be my biggest exactly. chance. Yeah. <laughs> you'd, you'd want to see how it ended. No, but, but seriously, <laughs> so you look at that and you, you go to Good Friday and you have Jesus' last words, you know, and, and he gives us his mother. One of the last things that Christ says, and he knew when he was going to die, is he gives us his mother, like the role of Mary in our life and, and, and our role uh, in, in the church, you know, and different things like that it comes from, from that moment on the cross in a profound way because, because we are his beloved, you know. And uh, the other piece is to go to uh, the Last Supper, you know, and he knew, he knew what was going on. He even kind of called Judas out, he who dips the spread, you know, and, uh, and that, that must have been the, the world's most awkward moment, you know. Yeah, but, for real. Uh, yeah. And so, uh, but he establishes the priesthood. He establishes the Eucharist. And so he's saying something that is profound in those moments. And last but not least, the agony in the garden, he invites us in. I, I, so, uh, I so struggle with Catholic guilt all the time. And I think that sometimes it's a good little motivator, right? This is how people come through and get sacraments because grandmothers and mothers Catholic guilt their children into making sure these things happen, right? So Catholic guilt has its place. But I think when people look at the agony in the garden, 
they see Jesus coming and waking, waking those, uh, the, the apostles up and saying, could you pray with me? And, and then they fall back asleep and everyone's like, oh, they're so rotten. We should pray. We should feel bad if we don't pray. But really, I think that it's important to reflect on Jesus invites us into that garden, into that suffering. And so our suffering, both this week and beyond, should have new meaning because he wasn't waking them up because he's like, they really need to get their prayer time in today. They, they spent all day with Jesus. Like, I don't know if they need to pray more that day. I think what they, they were getting an invitation to is to sweat and ask if the Father's will is the Father's will. Even if it involves suffering, I'm going to do it. And that calls us to reflect on our own life. So to unite ourselves to the life of Christ is what Holy Week and the Triduum specifically is all about. And then we get to rise with him on Easter Sunday. Hashtag spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, that's like the, you know, you hand somebody a book and like, hey, you know what? The main character dies at the end. It's like, dang it, you told mm-hmm. me the end of it, right? Uh, which is yeah, also yeah. weird in the Bible because it actually doesn't happen at the end. It happens like pretty close to the middle, which is weird. Um, so you were like, I had never thought about what, what you said of your reflection on uh, the Garden of Gethsemane. Like, I always was kind of like the Catholic guilt thing. <laughs> it's like, really? You couldn't stay awake? And my my honest thing was like, okay, you're like, I probably should have stayed awake. Um, but like, also like, it's it's pretty late at night and they've been with Jesus all day. Like, what if I've been in a retreat all day with Jesus all day and I'm in bed late at night, <laughs> I'm like, I don't want somebody to say, can't you stay awake with me? Like, no, I'm tired, right? So I, I really like your reflection on like, suffer with me because that's what sometimes staying up late or waking up early or, or sticking to your prayer time when it gets hard really is. And it actually reminded me one Lent, I decided that I was going to do an hour of adoration a day. I was in college. I had a lot more free time than I currently do. And uh, zero children. Yeah, yeah. Zero children. My wife, my, well, she was my girlfriend at the time was long distance in Florida. So like I had all the time, all the time in the world. Right. But um, yeah. a lot of times I was like, I'll, I'll go every day. And sometimes I found myself like, you know, it's, it's midnight. I'm finishing up my day and I haven't gone yet. So I'd like go at like one or two in the morning until like three, you know, and I would fall asleep. And I always thought of that story. <laughs> Why couldn't you stay awake with me for an hour? I was like, dude, I am tired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned Lexio Divina and then you were, you were, you connected it to like seeing, putting ourselves in the story, right? If you could expand yeah. on Lectio Divina just a little bit more for our listeners who may not know what that practice is, um, just so that they can be equipped for it during this Holy Week. Awesome. Great. Uh, so Lectio Divina is a way to really engage scripture or allow scripture to engage you. And it involves taking a passage or a story in the Bible and go ahead and you read it through three times. But the first time you read it, you just kind of read it through slowly, let the story kind of wash over you. The next time you read it, you go ahead and you place yourself in the story. Um, And this is just one approach to like the other. There's a number of different kind of varieties and variations. But but you place yourself in the story um, as an observer. Uh, But they are asking if you're like at the baptism of Jesus, they want you to go ahead and place yourself so in the story that you can feel the grains of sand on your feet. You can feel the the mist rising off of uh, off of the sea. And, uh, and, and, and smell the, the, the salt in the air and, and different things like that. And so you really place yourself into that story and read it through again, nice and slowly as if you were there. And, uh, and then kind of reflect on what, what emotions did it bring? What type of um, feelings did you experience and reflect on that? And then finally, um, the third time through, you go ahead and you place yourself as one of the characters in the story. And, uh, you know, I, I had a friend that, uh, that did it. And he's like, uh, the story of the prodigal son is a great one to go ahead and like the, uh, and uh, 90% of the people are like, you know, I was the, uh, I was the prodigal son. I turned away from God and then I came back and just the father's embrace. And about 10% of the people were like, I was the other brother that was like, come on, father, I've done everything right. And, uh, I've said 10 roses a day for 10 years. Why is this guy getting to go to church and take my seat? Like, like what gives? And then this, this friend of mine, who's a priest, he goes, I honestly feel in that story that I'm the fattened calf. Like I constantly get sacrificed. As a parish priest, I'm constantly getting sacrificed for this or for that or for this or for that. I have never heard just, anybody it, connect with the fattened calf. Like, I mean, sometimes I feel funny? like a fattened yeah. calf, but never in like a holy way. It's just because I've gained some weight. Sure, sure, sure. But no, I mean, it, it, it was just an interesting perspective that probably uh, would not have ever come about without some serious reflection. And so it kind of makes scripture come alive in a new way. Now, I don't recommend for Old Testament uh, genealogies. I mean, it's like, okay, 
feels like a wedding, you know, a wedding invitation list. It's not going to be the same, but if you find a story or a parable, start with your favorite and dive in and just kind of get warmed up. And then next time you engage scripture and let it engage you in a new way through, through the gift, really God has given us um, the gift of our imagination and using scripture to allow him to guide our imagination is a prayerful and beautiful thing. Dude, Chris, thank you so much for, for coming on today, for sharing, um, your reflections on Holy Week, how we can better go through this Holy Week. And also, uh, just thanks for their ministry that you're doing as, as somebody who has been burnt out in ministry uh, several times. You guys are, are helping me stay away from uh, getting burnt out again, and I know you guys are helping a lot of people. So um, how can people get connected with you and Next Level Ministry, like online or on social media or whatever? Yeah, great. So you, you can follow us on Facebook. Uh, Next, Just search Next Level Ministry and look for... Uh, a good looking guy with a, a beard. Uh, you can, you can email me directly, Chris at next level Um, uh, our Twitter handle is NLM ministry. Um, and, uh, just, just turn us out at our website, next level There's a lot of different ways that you can contact us there, but dig around in some of the content and take, take a few minutes, a few moments where we also have a YouTube chat page and, and a channel and things like that. But, uh, most important thing is to dive into the content um, and and let it let it kind of inspire you for the next time that you stand before someone and seek to uh, to share Christ with them. Well, sweet Chris, thanks a lot for coming on. Uh, I'll talk to you soon, guys. We will be right back with our final segment of Forte Catholic for the day. Chris, we'll see you later. God bless you. All right, we are back for our final segment of today's Forte Catholic. If you're just joining us, we have been talking about a bracket all night that w- that was created um, between I, I, I made it with the help of our good friend Brian Lennox and Becca Landry, who was on the show earlier. Um, one of the competitors, I let him know when it went live about an hour and a half ago, two hours ago, um, that he was in the bracket. We had some laughs about it, and he was like, hey. If you want somebody to come on the air and talk about it, let's do it. So Mr. Tony Vicenda is on the air with us now. Tony, how are you? And why don't you introduce yourself to our friends listening to us right now? I am doing good. Uh, my name is Tony Vicenda. I am a uh, lay minister who lives up in Shoreline, Washington, just north of Seattle. I am a uh, Texas native who moved up here about five years ago. I also travel around the country and do itinerant ministry at uh project with project ym where we do uh training for catholic youth workers to equip them to do worthwhile ministry and i run a small little apostolate called catholic balm co also so small I'm little guy. apostolate man it's the most popular catholic uh, object you can buy <laughs> for beards at least yeah yeah for beards for the select few of us that have them and uh I, I guess you don't have many women buying that product so i guess you cut off that's that's not a great model you only have you cut off half of the uh population with what you're going to sell well we actually have uh solid lotion bars and lip balm because we did find out that only a small percentage of the population has beards but apparently 99.9 percent of people have lips and skin and so uh, we figured we would branch out Make something for the ladies and something for everybody who has lips and skin. Dude, one percent of the population is like seven hundred million people. There are not that many people that don't have lips. <laughs> I said, I said ninety nine point nine. It's point zero one. That's still a lot of people, though. That's think, still so, yeah. You know. I, I after so right when the show ends, sure. the first thing I'm going to do before editing the show is I'm going to Google people without lips and see what it looks like. God, I'm going to go. I, I'm going to go to purgatory for sure. All right, so. Uh, yeah, so Project YM, if you were going to do an elevator speech for what Project YM does and what your role with it is, you have 60 seconds. This is the longest elevator ride you've ever been in. 60 seconds. You're going from floor one to four to floor uh, 999. What is Project YM? Yeah, sure. Project YM is a ministry that's there to help equip Catholic youth workers to do worthwhile youth ministry. We know that there's a lot of groups out there. We want to tell people that youth ministry is complex, but could be easy. Uh, We think that youth ministry is hard, but is worthwhile and is simpler than people think it is. So we want to give people the tools they need to do worthwhile ministry and the work that they're doing. That's fantastic. So how do you guys go about doing that? 
So we do that a couple different ways. We have three primary things that we do. We do a lot of online content. We do weekly web content. Uh, we've got a large blog that's got about 24 different contributors from around the world. Nice. Uh, we do webinars on a regular basis, and we do a lot of other online content. Uh, we do a lot of on-site programming, so we do speaking, training, uh, and events. We also do a little bit of coaching, some one-on-one -on -one stuff with Catholic youth workers, a couple different cohorts, um, and some troubleshooting and problem-solving with different groups. So that's the main uh, slice of the pie for us, but it's a lot of getting out there and talking to people about how to reach the next generation uh, and equip them as saints. That's awesome. So if, if people wanted to get connected with you guys, what's the best way they could do that? Yeah, best way is to go to projectym.com or hit us up on Facebook, facebook.com slash projectym. Awesome. So the the main thing I want to get into today is uh, you, you were talking a lot of smack on, on Facebook saying that you were going to win this thing. You only have a couple people gunning for you. And you actually, you actually uh, like, you, like I, I've met you recently. I, I You don't look yeah. like a man who, who used to... Uh, he used to do wrestling and all this kind of stuff. So why why should you win this thing? Uh, sell me Wait, on it. I don't look like a man who used to do wrestling. What are you trying to say? What are you trying to say? I'll uh, I'll, I'll I, let I, you I, figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, I spent about uh, about six years uh, in wrestling. Made it to uh, state twice. Dang! Um, uh, did not win either time. Dang. Uh, I was a heavyweight. I was actually on the lighter end of heavyweights, though, which. Uh, made me a little bit faster than everybody. Now I certainly exceed that weight limit a decade later and four, uh, four kids afterwards. I also had a, a couple years of mixed martial arts training um, with a mix of uh, wrestling, taekwondo, um, and a couple different types of martial arts mixed in that uh, we worked in. So a lot of grappling, um, a lot of submission holds, a lot of other stuff like that. I know that doesn't necessarily directly translate to boxing, but if the ref looks away for a second, I'm just saying, who knows what could happen. Dude, um, I post I posted uh, this I, like two hours ago, and there have been like <laughs> nine different people in the bracket that are like, oh, I'm totally breaking the rules by bringing in a chair, or I'm bringing, I'm going to do grappling holds. I'm like, dude, like you're in ministry. Why are you all trying to cheat? <laughs> you got it. You know, I mean, so so here's the thing. The clinch move, you know, like getting in there and, and making sure you're connected with the person, that's a, that is a legal grappling move for very brief periods of time until the ref tells you to break it up. I mean, you just got to, you got to use the skills that you have and you got to bring everything you got to the table. I wouldn't, I don't know that I would break the rules. I was always known on the mat um, and in the ring for kind of going to the very edge of breaking the rules without ever doing so. So I was, I was known for being the nicest guy in the world off the mat and the guy you never wanted to go up against on the mat. And so um, I, I definitely, definitely play in that area. I, do, I, I did not pick myself as the winner, though. Um, I did not. I made it pretty far, but I, I actually did not pick myself as the winner. Who did you pick as a winner? Who, ended up, who did it end up being? Who was in your final four? So do you remember? I picked, so final four. Um, was uh, uh, Chris Stepanek, um, who I think is phenomenal. He and I both have reach. Um, he and I uh, are both pretty tall guys. We've got, got some good extension. I've got a little bit more meat than him. I think I could take some more damage, uh, put a little bit more force in there. Um, and so I did, I did top myself out on him. So I was also in the final four. Um, Ike made it all the way to the final four for me. I thought his his quarter of the bracket were, were some pretty light guys. I it's all the musicians, I, you know, man. Like, <laughs> having, having his way with people. I, um, and so his I, first I matchup with John Michael Talbot through. is my favorite. Yeah. Is my favorite matchup. Like just, I want to, yeah. I, I want to make that one happen. I feel like that quarter should all be allowed to bring their guitars into the fight or whatever instruments they play. You'd should be allowed in. As, you do as realize that like the reason to make it even on that side, I did put them on the same side as the women's bracket. So all the all the musicians are on the same <laughs> side as the women's bracket. <laughs> well, and then I then I put uh, I put Oscar in there also too. Oscar is also in my yeah. My, he's a big uh, dude. My final four. I think he's I think he's good. I think I think Oscar and Ike uh, both both creamed through pretty easily on on both their brackets. Bob Bob did pretty well, um, but uh, uh, Lesnesky or Rice. Um, uh, well, both would have done good. That was a really interesting early matchup. I actually had Bob Rice. Uh, come out on top only because I know that Bob's recently had some health. Bob Lesneski's had recently had some health issues, so I figured he's got to take it easy. He's in recovery. Uh, if this were to happen right now, I think Bob Rice would come out on top. Um, but the person, the person I, I uh, selected as uh, the winner on that one, uh, oh, I guess this is another the final four. I guess I didn't make it to the final four. I made it to the top part, to the final eight. The person I had beat me out um, was uh, was Father Mike Schmitz. I mean, he's the most handsome priest in the world. He's the face of the new evangelization. I just don't know that I could bring myself 
uh, to hit him. And so I, I <laughs> he did come out on top. And in the women's bracket, uh, my good friend Katie Prejean uh, did come out on top. She is small. She doesn't have the reach, but I think she can keep it in pretty tight. And I know that I know that she works out. I know that she keeps herself in shape. Um, I did. I did not account for her being pregnant, I guess, when I was thinking through this. But it depends on whether it was, you know, right now or where she was at. But uh, I do I do think she brings uh, quite a bit of scrappiness uh, to it. Having her go against Jackie was a really hard decision to make, though. Yeah. It was a really tough one for me to to pick. And so I guess my final four in the end were uh, were Father Mike uh, versus me uh, and Ike versus Katie. And um, then I, I promoted... Uh, Ike and Father Mike to the end, um, and so that then Father Mike came out on top. I just I have I a gotcha. hard time seeing anybody hitting that guy in the face. Yeah, so, <laughs> uh, he's 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 such a phenomenal. I also think he's probably in better shape than almost anybody in this entire bracket. The man takes really good care of himself. He's a runner. He's got the endurance. Um, so I think he comes out on top in the end. Yeah, he's he's a good dude. It's it's so funny, like how many X like fighters or ex athletes are in this. I, I'm I'm pretty similar to you. Like I was a I was a college athlete, and then you know I got married and I have two kids, and I've put on quite a few pounds at this point. So I think a lot of us, uh, if we would have you know brought this back to like when everybody was 23, it'd get real interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, Fatika was Fatika was the hard one for me to 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 say I was going to come over on, but I stood next to the guy. I've got I've got a good like two feet on him almost not actually two feet i've got a good good like uh 15 inches on him i think my reach um would come out um over the top of his his over the top better fitness than mine still um i think i could keep it in tight keep from having to move around too much and i think i could work him uh and, and come out on top that he was he was the one i was the most scared of yeah i think he could take you if we're being honest <laughs> he he kind of. I stood next to you guys, actually in a like in an underground bar that you invited us to in California, and I was like, "Yeah, that dude's kind of scary looking." So, <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing: I know where the underground bars are. I had to invite you guys all, so that's the thing. I mean, like, I've I've got I've got that street level, you know, view. I'm tough. I'm hip. I'm I'm with it. Anybody who says they're hip is not. By the way, that's not that's not. Yeah, yeah. Not. The longer you talk, the less I believed you. <laughs> 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 All right, so here's what we're going to do. Yeah. We, we, we know why you think you're going to win. Uh, we got through almost half the bracket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue introducing some of our, our contestants, and I'm going to let you pick, um, uh, move us along this bracket on who you would pick. So Deacon Harold Burke okay. Sivers, who's known as the dynamic Deacon, uh, he's one of the tremendous speaker, just on fire when he talks, is going up against um, everybody's lovable friend, Patrick Madrid from the Patrick Madrid Show. Uh, who'd you pick out of those guys? I, I definitely picked Deacon Harold. I mean, I love Patrick. He's got the mustache, which gives him a little bit of an edge. Uh, he's got he's got a lot of experience. He's a, he's a world traveler. But I think I think Deacon Harold's sheer physicality and his passion definitely uh, overwhelms in that experience. Yeah, for sure. Um, the next one you've already actually kind of answered. We're getting into the musicians bracket now. Ike and Dolo, who's one of the leading Catholic youth uh, youth conference musicians um, going up against probably the longest tenured Catholic musician in the entire world, Mr. John Michael Talbot. Um, this is probably my favorite matchup. I love it a lot. And I think you already said you picked Ike. Um, <laughs> so what I did. I did. I made it really far, but um, I, you know, I, I just, given that it, in, in this situation, I feel like everybody is in somehow inclined into this boxing match. I still don't, I still don't see John doing it. I feel like he would go into the ring. And then he just like walk up and just like hug Ike and then like lift his hand in the air. I feel like I feel like he's not gonna fight him. He's gonna just be like, you know what, Ike's got this. Ike's the man. I'm gonna let him have it. Um, you know, so I, I just feel like I, I have a hard time seeing John uh in in that uh in that in that venue. Like like picturing that fight has been my this is all an idea that came up on Saturday. I've been picturing that fight in my head. For the entire time, it, it, it's it's super hilarious. Uh, a lot of it turned out exactly like you just said. One of my other favorite fights is our next one. Um, the the great Catholic uh, rock acoustic humor band uh, Popple are actually the two guys in that band are going up against each other. Mr. Kyle Hyman, who has been a friend of the show, he's been on uh, the show a couple of episodes ago, and Dan Harms, his his friend in this. So, um, in the battle of Popple, who would you pick? Yeah, I picked I picked Dan in this one, um, and there's a couple reasons why. I, I think again, I'm going to go with if somebody knows how to fight, reach is a huge factor in this, right? A couple extra inches. I mean, Dan's a little bit little bit taller than Kyle, 
Um, I think Kyle's a little bit more compact, but I also, he's got that fiery red beard. And so I just feel like there's probably some deep, deep down inside, there's some sort of passionate anger that would come exploding out of Dan. I've, I've never seen it in real life. I have no idea why I feel that way, but I feel like in, in the moment, um, in the moment that he would, he would release just a massive amount of energy and vigor and just overwhelm uh, Kyle. Kyle also was completely exhausted from all the additional side product projects that he has. I think, I think he comes to the ring a little bit more tired than Dan does in this situation. Oh, factoring out, factoring in outside life. You're putting a lot of thought into this. Uh, I like it. I, I like that. Um, the, the next one is, is, uh, I think probably the single most popular Catholic uh, musician, Mr. Matt Marr, going up against everybody's favorite Catholic beatboxer, Paul J. Kim. Who you got in this one? I got Matt. Um, I, you know, it was, this was a hard one. I probably thought longer about this one um, than I did uh, any of the rest of them. I know, I know that that uh, Matt takes really good care of himself, um, and I know that he uh, he takes really good care of himself when he's on the road and when he's at home. I don't know that that Paul doesn't. Um, but that's really kind of what put it over the top for me. Um, I think uh, Paul just also strikes me as just a slighter guy. Like he, he wouldn't be able to take as many hits um, as Matt might be able to to take. And so when it when it came down to it, um, that that kind of pulled it out for me. Yeah, for sure. I don't think that fight would ever happen. I think the Papa one we can make happen, but this one's never going to happen. Um, the next one. I the- think you got twenty bucks. You can make the Papa fight happen, dude. Yeah, for sure. Uh, they they they'd do it in a heartbeat. Uh, the next one's the Battle of the Bobs, Mr. Righteous B, Bob Lesneski against Bob Rice. We were talking about this matchup earlier. Who'd you end up picking? It was really hard for me to pick Bob Rice because he recently shaved his beard off, and he and I have a real bone of contention around this. Oh, um, man. And, so, um, and, and the reason he shaved it off is because he's getting older. So age was a factor. I do know that Bob has recently had – Lesneski has had a couple of uh, health issues, and so I know he's on the mend right now. Uh, but I think if this fight was to happen right now, um, it would be it would be Bob Rice. Um, I'm just you know I, I think normally I would go with Bob Lesneski, but but right now if it was happening at this moment I would put put my money on Bob Rice. Yeah, for sure. All right, we're we're running out of time, but um, we're gonna we're gonna do uh, a couple from the one from the women's bracket. What was your favorite matchup from the women's bracket? Okay, so mine is actually a second level matchup, and it was um, so I I picked Jackie Francois in the beginning and Katie, um, Prejean and McGrady, um, who are both really good friends of mine. Um, and I, I had a really hard time when they went up against each other, deciding who I thought would win again for me, a lot of times, you know, reach is, is the overwhelming factor. Like, can you hit the other person before they hit you? Can you keep them out away from the body? You know, can you, can you keep on working them? And so Jackie has that in her favor, but I know Katie, uh, really well. I know she's got that feisty Cajun, Cajun spirit. I know she's a dodger and a weaver uh, working in and out. And, uh, you know, I know that she just recently moved her house from one place to another. So I think she's got a couple extra Like she physically up picked right it up now. and so moved it? She physically picked it up and moved it across <laughs> the city of Lake Charles, Louisiana, um, which is only something that can happen in the South. Uh, and so I, uh, I think, I think I, I went with Katie in this one. I was really conflicted around it, uh, but I do think I think she would end up coming inside the reach. I think she'd get inside, but I think she'd uh, she'd work Jackie over pretty well. I, so don't tell Bobby I said that because uh, <laughs> I, I love them both so much. Um, but uh, that's that's the way things worked out in the end. Well, sweet. Hey, man, thanks for coming on, having some fun with us. Uh, guys, go check him out on projectym.com. We didn't get through the whole bracket today, but um, on fortecatholic.com, go there. You'll find the blog, find it on all the social media stuff. We're promoting it like crazy. Uh, every one of these matchups has explanations on who these people are and ways to get in touch with them. So uh, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, go vote. We will be back next week. See ya! <laughs>